From that day forward, half of my men were doing the work and half of them were taking up spears, shields, bows, and body armor. Now the officers were behind all the people of Judah who were rebuilding the wall. Those who were carrying loads did so by keeping one hand on the work and the other hand on their weapon. The builders to a man had their swords strapped to their sides while they were building, but the trumpeter remained with me. I said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, the work is demanding and extensive, and we are spread out on the wall, far removed from one another. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, gather there with us. Our God will fight for us. So we worked on with half holding spears from dawn to dusk. At that time, I instructed the people that every man and his co-worker spend the night in Jerusalem and let them by guard, be guards for us by night and workers by day. We did not change clothes, not I, nor my relatives, nor my workers, nor the watchmen who were with me. Each had his weapon, even while washing the clothes. Maybe may be seated. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you right now for your word, for what you're going to do today in the mind and the heart and the spirit of your people. So God, we bless you, and we thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. And amen. amen. Come on, somebody, just lift up a praise in the house for just one moment. This is just a praise that expectancy that you're expecting God to fix something for you. Does anybody here that knows that God did this scenario? You know, but every now and then we may, we act like we're lost to where we need, but sometimes you gotta get real and just realize that God, I know where it is, and, and, it, and the problem is with me, but God, I, I need you to do something today. And to change something today permanently. Not get better. But be done. really is. The stages that we've been playing is really flesh mixed with spirit. But the Bible says that who the Son is set free is free indeed. And then there isn't a process to this deliverance that God is saying listen, the time is now. And I want to deliver you and do a permanent work. And that temporary blessing is about to be removed so you can enter into a permanent place that cannot be stopped cannot be touched, cannot be altered by anything other than me. So we bless him right now for what he's about to do. Let's get into this word. Now, as we begin to look at the book of Nehemiah in the fourth chapter, uh, and I talked a little bit about this uh, last week, what we find out is that, uh, that God had sent a man by the name of Nehemiah to begin to rebuild the wall. There, there, was a, there was a rebuilding project that was going on, and they had gone for 150 years and had rebuilt the city to an extent, but now that, that God was now bringing them to rebuild the wall, and he brought a man by the name of Nehemiah. Interesting, because sandwiched between, you know, all these great Elijahs and Elijahs and these men who did miracles and who fought in the spirit, and even in the natural, Nehemiah actually teaches us how to defeat our enemy without fighting like we know how to fight, and, and like it is natural for us to fight. So God began to send Nehemiah, and Nehemiah heard some rumors that had come from the people. Matter of fact, they began to downplay them and degrade them, and they said that I see this building project that you're in, and this thing that you're doing, and that if a fox got hold of it, if it just walked up on the wall, it would tear down everything that you're doing. But Nehemiah answered back by praying, and then he kept on building the wall. And then we find out that, as, as the Bible tells us, that God said, I won't let you be ignorant of any of Satan's devices. It kept coming back to Nehemiah, every plot and plan that they had for them. And the Bible tells us that God began to frustrate their work when they found out that it came back to them. Now, I need you to understand that what God did. The first thing that God did was he allowed Nehemiah to begin to see the plan of the enemy. He began to expose everything that the enemy tried. And when we need to, when we begin to praise God, what you got to understand is that their weapons formed against you, but they actually don't prosper. And you got to understand that you got folk that are trying to come against you that are stumbling and falling all around you. See, I mean, there's some, sometimes you see the plot, a uh, plan of people, and you find out it don't work, and then you begin to praise God, but you don't recognize that there are enemies all around around you that tried to come up and eat your flesh, but David said they stumbled and they fell. That means that there's some stuff that just happened because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and so when God begins to order my steps 
and I begin to go toward a plot of the enemy and he digs a hole for me, God will start calling me in another direction and I don't even realize that my new direction is a way out of no way. That the, everything that the enemy planned for evil, God will mess around and use it for good. So what looked like it was going to be a bad thing and a tragedy all of a sudden becomes my biggest testimony. So God has a way of allowing the enemy's work to be frustrated. And I want you to understand what frustrated means. It means that you're not frustrated, but the enemy is frustrated because everything he's trying is simply is not working. You over here working for God, doing what God called you to do, and the enemy's over here scratching his head, trying to figure out why I can't kill you, why I can't destroy you, why are you still praising him, why are you still worshiping after everything I do at you, after everything I try, after trying to come against your name, your reputation, your family, your finances, everything about you, I try to destroy you, and I'm frustrated because you're still working. See, the song said, let my work speak for me. See, every now and then, God is saying, you ain't got to fight. Just be anointed. You ain't got to start telling nobody nothing. Just be powerful. And I'm going to let the trail and the byproduct of your anointing begin to be a testimony for you. You ain't got to tell nobody you got peace. Just shit out and start walking like a person with peace. That's a past all understanding. You ain't got to tell nobody how powerful you are. Just walk into a room where folks are talking about about you and still take the seat you suppose a seat don't worry about what they said on Facebook don't worry about what they said on Twitter know what they said and strut into the room anyhow in the face of adversity see if you never did that's the folk that need to praise God because of what you went through because when you understand what you went through it was suffering me up for my walk through the valley of the shadow of death Every now and then, everything that you went through, the stuff that happened to you when you were younger, what they said about you, all the slander, when you get to your big battle and people begin to look at you and wonder, how in the world are you able to praise God? You remember they called me ugly in the second grade. They called me crazy in the third grade. They said I was too fat and too skinny. I'm used to hearing folk not like me. I'm used to being misunderstood. I'm used to being lied on and gossiped about and talked about. Yeah, I must be something since I'm the center of your conversation. Keep on talking about me. There must be something that you see in me. I used to ask God, stop them from talking. But now I say, God, thank you that they're talking about me. Keep on talking as I go higher and higher. That's when that crazy praise comes in when you start thanking God for your haters. Because you understand why he left your haters there. Why you start removing your cheerleaders. Because your cheerleaders can't help you. But your haters can help you grow. Because the more you bleed, the more the land you have around you begins to get fertile. And the more you cry, the land around you begins to bring forth fruit. And you didn't even realize your tears were watering your promise. But God frustrated the work of the enemy. But he didn't stop the enemy. He didn't destroy the enemy, but he frustrates the work. So in other words, what God is doing, he's holding back the attack of the enemy. And every intention of the enemy is not working, and God is holding him back for a season. But the Bible tells us that while Nehemiah, while the work was being frustrated, Nehemiah started preparing the people for battle. Now, here's the thing. God is famous for telling us to prepare for battle. So God walks into a room and he says, get your work clothes on. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. See, Paul put it this way. He said, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you're able to withstand the wiles of the devil. Now, now here's what he said. He didn't say the attack of the devil. He said the schemes of the devil. Because it, it, sometimes it's a mind attack. Because you want to say that God is trying to say they're trying to probe you to see if you really know who you are. Because the reason they attacked you in the first place is because they knew how valuable the land that you were walking on really is. But they had an inkling that you didn't really know that you were fearfully and wonderfully made. That you sitting in the mirror talking crazy about yourself and you didn't even realize that you're the head and not the tail. And the 
that you are above only and not beneath, and he you walking in bondage, but who the Son is set free is free indeed. And God said, Don't be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. So I've been trying to free you, but they don't understand who you are, and but they do understand that you don't understand who you are. So every attack that came was not physical, it was spiritual, because they were trying to probe you in the spirit to try to see where your connection is. And whether you know who you are. But what Nehemiah began to do is that he recognized how God works. And he realized that God was trying to let them know that God will tell you, get your war clothes on. Put on your shield. Get your shield together and your helmet and your breastplate together and your girdle together and get, and get your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace and then you got your shield and you got your sword and you got everything you need and then God struts it again and he says, but you won't have to fight this battle. Because the battle is not yours. But the victory is. So just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You woke me up and you told me to get everything together and you prepared me for battle and you, I got a sword on my side because the Bible says that he had half the people that were, that were on one side that were just set aside for fighting. Uh -huh. And then he had another group that was set aside for working. So he had some people in the spiritual realm that were armed continually that were simply there to bully the enemy in appearance. I'm here to let you know that if you come here, you got to come through me. Yeah. And then there's some other folks that got anointed to begin to do the work. So that there's ministers that he gave. He said, I gave some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. And I gave them so they could equip the people for the work of the ministry. So God has got some ministers that he set on the wall. And I want some folks to begin to understand right now that God is saying, I'm giving you a bully spirit. And I'm letting you know right now that you are not to push my people around, but you are to push the devil around. I want him intimidated by your look. I want him intimidated by the anointing that's in you. I want him intimidated by the power. You ain't got to do nothing. Just get dressed for war. You ain't got to say nothing. Just be in position to fight. Because all he needs to do is see you. Because see, you got to understand that your anointing is so powerful that God says you ain't got to fight. Just be prepared and let the enemy see that you got your sword. See, the Bible said that even the people that were working had a sword on the side. Because what they recognized is that the people who are supposed to fight for me can fight for me. They're anointed to fight for me. But if the enemy break through them and they should get weak in their fight, I got a sword of my own. I got a word of my own. I got a prayer life of my own. I appreciate the apostle praying for me. I love the fact that the bishop is praying for me. But if he ever get tired and stop praying for me, I'm learning how to pray for my own self. If he ever gets tired of fighting the spirit for me, I can tackle some devils on my own. I'm learning how to be powerful by myself so I can work and do what God has positioned me to do. But if he needs me to pray, I know how to pray. And it's something that don't matter what position you have in the church, you better know that your sword is right there. You better have the sword of the spirit because the devil ain't attacking you at the, at the sanctuary. He's trying to tackle you in your house. He's trying to mess with you in the bathroom. He's trying to mess with you in the kitchen. He's trying to mess with you in the car. And you ain't got time to call on the warriors. You better be a warrior yourself. <laughs> Am I talking to anybody that knows? The God is saying, I'm speaking to you. That's why nobody was around you when you went through that last thing. That's why nobody was there to help you. That God was saying, just let him see your Savior. All you got to do is lift up the word of God. He said, and I if I be lifted up. Don't you understand that the devil yes. trembles yes. at the word of God? Yes. But what we don't understand is that the devil is not just trembling at the word of God, but he's trembling at the carrier of the word of God. In other words, he also is afraid of you. The demon 
and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Do you understand that God is saying, I want you to begin to build a reputation in the kingdom of darkness for power. I want them to see you when you come into the hospital room. Oh no, will she come again? I know somebody's about to get delivered. I when you walk into a church, I want them to begin to shake in their boots when they see you. She about to sing the song of Zion. Somebody's about to come out of a problem that they're in. Something that was already unraveled is about to be unraveled. Everything that was crooked is about to be made straight. Here they come again, 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 something's about to happen, here they come again, do you understand that God says your footsteps are heavy, you sound like many waters, when you begin to speak, devils begin to tremble, and then here's what Nehemiah said, Nehemiah said, I want half the people working, I want half the people with spears, but I want the people working with swords on their side. Because I want you to be able to do spiritual warfare. But he said, the trumpeter is going to stay with me. And, and then they begin to look and he says, you're over there. And I'm over here. And you're over there. And there's another group over here. And how in the world are we going to stay connected? He says, when we hear the sound of the enemy, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, I want everybody to rally around me and that sound. And I want you to understand what God is trying to say right now. That the body is trying to fight battles by itself. And that's why we're being defeated. That, that we're literally running after battles and Nehemiah said, you got to wait till you hear the sound of my trumpet. Because there's some stuff that they got you fighting that you really shouldn't fight. Because you realize that, that it wasn't about fighting, it was about building the wall. That Nehemiah set up everything for one purpose. I know how to defeat the enemy. I'm just going to be successful in what God called me to do. I know how to fight the enemy. I ain't got to go out here and raise up my, my saber. I got to keep on doing what God called me to do. Let me tell you something right now. And I'm going to tell you something serious. One of the reasons why the church is ineffective is that we're fighting battles that we weren't called to fight. That, that, you know, that, that's pornography right there. God doesn't want that. Let's go, let's go fight it. Nope. There's an abortion clinic over there. Let's, let, let's go fight it. Then there's gay marriage. Let, let's go fight it. Let's, let's stop it. God doesn't want it. Let's go fight it. God says, I didn't tell you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. I didn't tell you to go out here marching and trying to stop anything. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I didn't give you an assignment to, to deal with what folk do in their house. I'm God. I can handle that. What I told you to do was to go into the highways and the byways and preach the gospel. I told you to tell somebody about the good news, and if you want to know the truth, you ain't really qualified to tell nobody how to live if I look at your life. You really ain't the person that needs to pass judgment on what anybody needs to do. You got skeletons that are trying to creep out the closet right now, and if we took a close look at them, I can see the dry bones in your life sticking out right now. So what you ought to do is stay up under the blood of Jesus so that your stuff is not exposed. But what you are qualified to do is to be a witness for me because you were lost and now you are found and get your mouth off my anointing. We got a mission and sometimes the enemy try to pull us off with stuff that look good. And nobody can come to the church and get delivered because we out here marching and try to stop stuff that God says, I didn't tell you to stop nothing. I told you to start a fire where you are. I gave you a match not to burn down triple X movie theaters. I want you to light some souls on fire. And listen, if I get home to some people, then I'll fix them like I want to fix them. But if I don't fix them and they praise me anyhow, you better keep your mouth off my praise that I told you that I got some rocks that are quiet for me. I got some hard heads and some knuckleheads that I'll bring into the church that are praying to your place. And I'll take me some drug dealers and some prostitutes and some alcoholics and I'll make them the praise team. So if you don't want to praise me right, I got 
got some folk that appraise me. And some folk that know how to carry a sword too. Some folk that know how to fight when I tell them to fight. Folk know how to run when I tell them to run. Folk know how to shout when I tell them to shout. You ain't got the pity pack. They know how to praise me in the midst of adversity. Some folk that got some battle scars. And some folk that's waiting on the sound of the trumpet. Because he said, don't, don't you start fighting when you think you need to fight. I'm, I'm trying to help some folk right now because some of y'all have some battles that you've been trying to fight. And God said, listen, I need you to stand still. I need you to stop trying to figure it out. I need you to stop trying to figure out financially because it won't work no matter how you work the numbers. It's not going to work. It's been the same numbers. It's still the same numbers. You ain't anointed enough to change them and, and move them. But if you learn how to stand still and stand still right, because he's standing still, it's having your sword. See, the enemy just don't think that you really are for battle. And God said, all I want you to do is just get a raise. Stop putting your Bible out here. Begin to put your prayer cloth out here. Begin to set up a room in the house where God can begin to dwell. Get the time and a place where you can meet with him. Because the two and three are gathered together in my name. God said, I'll be in the midst. Let the devil know I'm doing it now. I'm about to go deep now. I'm about to start praying now. I'm about to start fasting now. I need to let you know, this house is my house. And I'm about to serve an eviction notice today. Oh, there's a praise moment right here because you just got your marching order. And I just said, you ain't really looking right. So I just need you to get your head together. Get your hair done. And start looking like I'm about to do something in your life. Get your head together. Put something on your face. And start dressing right. Come into my, my presence with singing. I want you to start shouting your way into your deliverance. Not shout your way out. Shout your way in to your deliverance. God, I'm shouting right now. right now that God is saying, I just want you to know how powerful you are. I just want you to understand how powerful you really are. In the spiritual realm, that's why I allowed this fight to come. But that's why he ain't touched you yet. Because see, when you understand where Nehemiah was, they was talking trash, but they had never crossed the line. And I want you to understand that God said, the devil just sitting out there talking trash, but he's never crossed the line. Because he understands that you have just woken up, arise and shine. But my life has come. If you didn't kill me last year, you messed up. Because this is still my year and my season and my time. And God said, go get your spear and go get your bow and go get your arrow. Dust off your weapons. Dust off your praise. Dust off your worship. It's time for the enemy to know I still got a praise. I still got to worship. He's dressing some people right now for success. You weren't preparing to win. You was preparing to survive. So you was operating in a survival mindset with a survival praise and in spite of worship. So you never had a worship that would get you through. You had a worship and a praise that would just allow you to be able to maintain yourself and just not go crazy where you are. But God said, I didn't anoint you and bless you just so you would not go insane. I blessed you so you could go forth and be more than a conqueror. I want to give you stuff that the enemy is going to be confounded by. I want to give you wisdom and knowledge that's going to make the enemy scratch his head and say, what manner of man is this? So I want you to understand that God is saying there's a problem in your way, but the problem is sent by me to manifest the miracle power that's on the inside of you. It's not the devil, it's not to embarrass you. It's not to break you down. You're in the midst of a troubled water. You're in the midst of a problem right now. Finances are up to your head. And God said, I allowed it to come so I can manifest the power that's on the inside of you. All I need you to get dressed for coming out. I need you to get dressed for getting over. I need you to get dressed for the new level. I ain't bring the dream and the vision for nothing. I ain't wake you up in the middle of the night for nothing. I ain't interrupt that conversation for nothing. You couldn't even deal with nobody. You had to steal away and get by yourself. Nothing was happening in the natural realm, but something was happening in the spiritual realm. You had to get by yourself and close 
entrepreneur and began to talk to God. You thought you were talking to yourself, but you were talking to the Spirit. And God said, I'm confirming. I'm confirming that the wall is about to be built. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you why the battle was so heavy. Because when you build a wall, it says, I'm here, and I ain't going nowhere. I'm here, but I ain't going nowhere. I get this every Sunday, and I stop building every Tuesday. But this time, I'm letting the devil know. And that's why the attack is coming, because he sees something in me this time that he didn't see in me last time. He saw messing with me now because he sees something that he saw in David before. He's seen this in Joseph before. He watched this in Noah before. They're trying to build something now. I think they're really serious now. They're trying to really kick the devil out their life now. They're trying to really quick tread upon servants right now. They're about to walk in the spirit now. The worship is going to another level. The praise is going to another level. The power is about to be manifested in another level. What they begin to point to begins to come to pass. What they begin to speak begins to come to pass. They are able to believe the impossible. Something's about to happen. So the devil begins to attack you like crazy because he just heard a word in the spirit. You ain't trying to leave. And some people are in a position of power that God says, if you start building right here, it is a declaration that you are staying in this territory and you're letting the enemy know that you are not building in the enemy's territory. He has been trespassing all this time and in reality, he's been in your territory. So you came in here to build in front of his face to let him know that the eviction is in effect and that whatever he plans for evil, that God is about to use it for good and every one of the things that he burned down is what you going to use for your building material. Do you understand that everything that is trying to use to destroy you is going to be my building material? And I'll be rich and wealthy when I write the book about what you tried to do to me and what you tried to say to me. And when I'm going into the new land, I'm going to remember it was your mouth that pushed me here and to this place. the wall we burn down bricks. Everything that they tried to use to destroy the city, God says you don't need more stuff. You need to use what you have right now. And I want you to grab, I want you to get that. That God is trying to let you know, we've been praying God, I need more stuff. I need you to do something and bring something in. And God said, listen, I'm trying to let you know right now that everything you need is in front of you. And though it may look broken down and burned down, I'm God. I'm just gonna let that set in for a minute because that, that's the medicine right there. That, that's the segment right there. That, that's supposed to make you just so tonight when you up worrying about what money's gonna bring, I just want to give you one just this this quick little phrase. But I'm from God. I was God was going through my bank account. God was like, but, but I'm God. So say they're downsizing God and in seven days we're not gonna have a job. And God's like, well, wait a minute, what am I child? I'm God. Hallelujah. And remember, I met David through verse number four through the valley of the shadow of death, only to get him to verse five and six. And you know his cup was running over. And I was setting the table before him in the presence of his enemies. And he wasn't gonna be thirsty forever. I just needed to see how he operated in the dark. So his light could be even more fruitful. So I need to see how you're going to act in the dark while I'm setting your table for you right now. While your cup is running over. And everything that they thought that I wasn't going to do. After going through all that, 
God says, the anointing has been waiting on you. You anoint my head with oil. I think there's a special anointing that you move into once you come through what you're going through right now. I'm already anointed, I know, to get through that. But I'm anointed to drink the cup you're about to drink. I'm anointed to get through trials. But you gotta be anointed to sit around enemies. I gotta be anointed to handle abundance because you said my cup's about to run over. So you're preparing me now. You gotta, you gotta anoint me, God, for wealth and for prosperity. And you gotta anoint me to be able to look back over my life and not to see a wreck, but to see goodness and mercy. The devil was trying to use my past against me, but when God anointed me, I mean, when God touched me, I look back over the stuff that folks said and I said, surely goodness. You thought I was going to cry about it, didn't you? But surely goodness. You thought I was going to break me down, didn't you? You thought that just the memory of what I had and all the bleeding and the crying. But when I thought about the goodness of Jesus and look back, I said, God, I see mercy and I see grace and I see goodness. So I can praise you. And that's what happens when the trick of the enemy don't work. You gotta start praising God. When every plan and plot that was against you just didn't work, you wanna start praising God. When you understand God, they tried to make me go crazy. I was opposed to commit suicide. From birth, they said I would never make it. But I ain't mad at nobody. I'm too busy praising God. I ain't mad at nobody now. I'm too busy looking at the anointing, not believing it's me. I'm too busy looking at it saying, God, I don't know how I made it. I ain't mad at nobody. I'm looking at my cup running over. And you know what? When David went in, people touched him. When he was anointed king, the prophet touched him. But when he came out of this trial, God touched him. And there's some folks in here right now that's been told and talked to and encouraged by people. But God says, no, 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 I need to touch you. I need to touch you. I need to seal some things in you. I need to put some things in you. I need to say some things to you that the devil can't mess with, that your circumstances can't alter, that situations can't change. I need to touch you. I need to set you free. I need to speak a word behind your ear saying, this is the way it walk in. I need to confirm that that thing that seems crazy to everybody else, it's me. You are my anointed, it's me. God, I live the crazy life, you still my prophet. The altar's open right now. 